I'm Glenn Lyons, I'm Senior Consultant uh, and Clinical Director and I've been at the Philip Kingsley Clinic in Green Street in London since 1968. All right. My big passion and interest over the last 20 years has been genetic hair loss, particularly in women. And one of the reasons is that there's a lot of young women that are suffering from genetic hair loss and the general consensus is that it only affects postmenopausal women but we're getting an enormous amount of young women coming in here with gradual thinning hair. Um, it, I think it's increasing, but there's also more awareness of it. Um, you have to have a predisposition genetically, but it's the influence, not the levels. They are normal levels of male hormone. All right. um, there's also a misconception about male hormones being high in order to get genetic hair loss, particularly in women. They're normal levels of testosterone. Um, but it seems to be more prevalent. Um, the oral contraceptive plays a part in women who have got pre a predisposition to genetic hair loss. It's very important that they go on the right oral contraceptive because if they're on the wrong one, the male hormone content of that oral contraceptive will exacerbate the thinning and accelerate the thinning. But genetic hair loss is still very gradual and it takes time to notice it. It's not like excessive shedding, where it's noticeable when you wash it, it's on the floor, when you hoover, on your clothes. It's very gradual. It's a miniaturization of the follicle. Um, it was thought to be only the female side of the family where you get the gene from, but it's been accepted, and I've always accepted it, that it's both sides of the family. So it's the male and the females, but you also get generation misses. It doesn't have to be just mother and father. It can be grandparents and so on. There has to be a predisposition genetically, but that, in my opinion, um, over the last 20 years is the most common hair loss I'm seeing in women under 35 years of age.